Hello, hello everybody. Happy Wednesday. My name is Clay Bella Rolson and we have a Faber Castell USA and Michael Stores. I would like to welcome all of you. Thank you so much for joining in. Thank you for spending some time with me this afternoon. I'm so glad that you're here. Um, so we have a lot of friends joining in today. So thank you, thank you. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to check out michaels.com for future classes and events so you can join us. All right, so today we're going to be doing a fun bullet Journal class. But before that, I would like to invite everybody to, if you are not following us yet, make sure to follow Learn With Michaels on social media. And of course, Faber Castell at Faber Castell USA. And my personal is at Mommy Lay. It's on the screen. Um, let's be friends. Let's stay connected. So today we're going to be creating a very romantic, very February <laughs> appropriate theme in our bullet journal. And of course, like always in all of my classes, Everything that we're going to learn today, the skill, you know, the techniques and, and, and fun, um, Today, specifically, we're going to create some florals. Of course, if you're not doing any bullet journal, that's okay. You can create your own card, you know, using the skill that you're going to learn today. You can make it into a wall art, you know, so many things, but let's have fun, bring out your markers and um, let's play. All right, so a, I will be using the Pit Artist Pens today from Faber-Castell. Now, again, as always, I always share this. If you don't have the specific markers, it's okay. Whatever markers you have in there, that's going to work, all right? But of course, sometimes the techniques and the things that I'm always share may be different. I have my favorite Pit Artist Pens in here. I tell you what, the reason why I love the Pit Artist Pens, these are water-based India ink. Now the India inks, they don't have any foul odor, you know, the smell. Um, they also do not bleed through. I have tried it in many different types of papers, many different types of journals, and I've never had issues with it bleeding through. And unless of course, we're just going to keep putting down the ink, laying down ink, then it might bleed through after a while. All right. So Colors, of course, I'm going to choose my favorite colors, the pinks, you know, and all of these. So I'm going to grab them, grab all of that. Now you can choose your own color palette, also your color scheme, whatever, whatever it is that you choose today. I'm going to pull out, I think I need some, hmm, do I need some green for like leaves? Maybe brown, some, some, the, I love this one, the green gold. It's kind of like an ochre, you know, so. All right, fine. What the heck? Might as well. I'm just going to pull up another green <laughs> because I'm very, I cannot decide what I want. All right. So these are the colors I'm going to use today. I'll share with you. So we have like light pink, some salmon in there. So hot pink. So like coral pink. So any of that. I also have, is this um, scarlet red? I don't know why I have scarlet red. I might not use it. I might use it, but you know what? We're going to do that. But since we're going to be creating something very easy, before we get started, I thought I'd share with you a little bit of my goal this year. You know, we have finished four classes for the month of January. Oh, no, no, we did five classes in the month of January. And because we're all artists in here, we're all creatives in here. We hang out every Wednesday to create, to play. And I thought I'd share with you a little bit of my goals. And uh, I would love for you to do the same and share with everybody. We're all friends in here. You know, what are your artistic goals for this year? My artistic goal for this year is to actually be more loose when it comes to my art. What does that mean? I feel like my style, you know, um, I, I don't think I have, I am evolving, but I, I thought I'd share that because I am a content creator, you know, I create contents for different companies and then I'm teaching classes. It's not like I can teach the kawaii doodling over and over again. So what's happening is that all of these classes, I am expanding my skill like you are. So while you're learning, you know, from me, I'm actually learning with you every time we do these classes. So my goal is to be more loose about my illustration this year and also try to focus on a medium that I really love. Although I have to touch many different mediums because, you know, we have to um, use faber Castell is an amazing company and they create many different types of products. And so I have to share that with you. Um, but with that in mind, I also want to choose one product that I really want to focus on and really get better at. So 
what are your goals? I'm going to share. I'm going to see what you guys are saying. Okay. No one's, no one wants to share. Lake? Come on, share. <laughs> um, Lake, yeah. Can you, can you talk to us a little bit about why the, um, why the Faber-Castell pens um, are, are different from other brands? Absolutely. Like, now especially. the Pit Artist pens, the, thank you, Carrie, the Pit Artist pens, they are India ink. There are water-based markers out there that, you know, you're going to see, you're going to hear water-based markers, water-based markers, water-soluble markers. Now the Pit Artist Pens, one thing I love about this one is they are water-based India, India inks. Inks are the India inks, they do not bleed through, first of all, and they are light fast. So that means when they're dry, they are not going to re-wet. So that it, it's going to stay smudge proof it's light fast which means your colors are not going to fade over time which is fantastic you know if you want a high quality marker i cannot i cannot say i have been sharing this everywhere all the time this is i highly recommend i cannot recommend it more than i have been recommending it so if you want quality faber castell it's you know, it's, it's an amazing company. They've been around since 1761. So that tells you a lot. Um, but the pit artist pens, they are artist grade materials. Now, if you're someone that feels like, well, you know, I'm just getting started with my art. I don't think I need that high quality yet. The good thing that Faber Castell, there's three different lines, actually four. So the green line, if you're going to go to Michael's and look at shop, you know, for markers, you see Faber Castell, then there's green, right? And then you see Faber Castell with blue. And then you see Faber Castell red. Now they've added the black edition, which we, you know, use in some of the uh, previous classes that we did last month. They have the black edition. Like what I think I shared last week when we did the brush lettering, the new soft brush pens are really good too. But one thing you're going to notice is that the more you use your markers, the more you're going to realize that they're different. They make different effects. And I, I always share this. It's not just your papers. It's also uh, not just your pens. It also depends on the paper that you use. So when you use different journals, when you use different papers, you're going to get different results. So it's like, I cannot say that my result today will look the same as yours because you may be using a different notebook, you know, to, to start with. Um, well, let's go back to the question. The difference from this one, I'm going to grab just the same Faber-Castell too, because these are from the same company, but they're very different. So to my left, I'm not sure if that's your left too, but to my left here, this one, this is the Pit Artist Pens. You're going to see physically they're very different, right? This one is longer, this one is shorter, and they're just very different. These markers to my right, these are the Faber-Castell, the Gold Faber Aqua dual markers. First of all, this one will have two tips, the fine tip over here. The Pit Artist Pen will only have a brush tip, right? This is a water-based, this is a water-based dye inks. So these are India, these are um, dye inks. They're going to be different. Um, this will be waterproof once they're dry. And it's highly light fast, which means it's not going to fade over time. These are dye inks. They are not light fast, which means that your art will fade over time, of course, when exposed to the sun, to the light. Um, these are water soluble. So that means when I lay it down here, I'm going to grab a different paper because for some reason, this Leuchtturm paper that I'm using, um, the markers don't blend as well as I would like it to be. So I'm going to apply that, add a little bit of water. And as you can see, it will blend with water, right? Again, it might not work the same if you're using a different paper because I was using a different paper earlier and they, were, they weren't blending as well as I would like. Now the Pit Artist pens, because they are water-based, once they're still wet on the paper, you can actually use a little bit of water and then blend it, but you have to work fast because look, once it dried and once that paper absorbed the inks, what's going to happen is they're just going to be smudge proof. So I can pour this whole water in here, the dirty water, <laughs> and it's not going to bleed. Now, if I 
apply water in here. For example, you have a sketchbook and you're working with the water-based dye inks that are, there's a lot of there in the market. Your beautiful illustration and drawings is going to be smudge and fade. It's going to get ruined. Now with the pit artist pens, once they're dry, your beautiful illustrations will stay intact, beautiful, and going to be colorful, as colorful as you made them to be. So that's just one of the difference um, from the water-based dye inks out there. These are water-based India inks. Okay. All right. Um, um, Susie, do the markers stain on the notebooks and the journals when doing a lighter color markers? That's the thing. Different papers were so different because I was using another um, notebook from a different company and I was working with the water-based dye inks. And to my surprise, the way that notebook or the way that paper, it absorbs so much of the ink that it didn't give me enough time to actually play around and move and blend the inks. And I was using the water-based dye inks. It shouldn't, that's... That's like unheard of. So it just depends on your paper. Now, when it comes to staining, I feel like the stain is going to depend also on the paper because like this one, you see that, you know, where we laid down the marker, you see a little bit of that staining, but I was able to manipulate the ink, the, the dye inks and move it around. Um, and I, I feel like if I would have used a bit more water in there, um, I would have been able to, I think I could have manipulated even more to remove the marking or the stain where we, where I applied the markers. Um, but again, it depends on the paper. Um, so yeah, that's my answer to that. Yes. The pit artist pens, chef's kiss. I love it. All right. I also love the brush tip size because the brush tip size of the pit artist pens is not so big. And the reason why I love this also is like so flexible. I mean, I can really see flex my, my, my pen and I know that it will just snap back. So there's a snap in there. This was our last bullet journal. So let's try. So I can really use this tip and create some organic marks. And also the brush pen will allow me to create a variety of stroke. So you can get thin strokes like that. But I think brush pens um, will give you a variety of strokes, but it just depends. You know, some markers will, will not have um, enough bend and snap to it that you might not get a whole lot of variation. Um, so it just depends on the marker that you're using. But typically, if you're using a brush pen, you can really create some variety. The contrast from your thin and heavy just depends on the pressure that you use uh, when using your brush pens. Now, speaking of um, variation of strokes, what I want us to do today first is do a little bit of exercises with our markers. Because when using a brush pen, I was sharing with you my goal to be more loosely, you know, with my... Um, illustrations, because I feel like I'm always so critical of being so perfect. And I think it goes perfectly also with Susie's question about staining and, you know, um, does it stain or create some marks? Honestly, that is one of my goals this year is to embrace the mark, the marks, I should say, the marks of the marker when I apply it and actually use it to my advantage to create more organic um, strokes to, you know, it's almost like impressionism, you know, so you're basically kind of like suggesting to your audience that these are flower petals. These are not just scribbles. These are florals, you know, so you're suggesting to your audience. So use your brush pens to create some organic marks and strokes to create beautiful flowers. So instead of drawing, I'm, I'm going to use my markers, my brush pen specifically as kind of like a painting tool. So I want to paint more instead of draw, which is more kind of like very critical of, you know, each stroke has to be clean and perfect. I just want to be more loose, more painterly. So speaking of that, let's get to our first exercise because um, I want us to be more comfortable with our pit artist pens. It is a brush pen. Now, I don't know if I've shared this with you or if you already know this, but I know I've shared this in the past, that the pit artist pen 
you can actually pull, I'm going to pull this one, pull the nib right here. And then if you feel like you have used that nib already, or if it's fraying already, you can twist it, put it back. Then you can use the other part of that nib. So you now you have a fresher nib, right? It's pretty cool. Not a lot of people know that. Now, also what I love to do is see how I pulled the brush nib a bit more. Um, so now it's, it's slightly longer than what, it, how it was. What this do is that it becomes more flexible. I can bend it really a bit more than usual. So I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so you can see like that. So you can really bend and then bend and snap, right? So you're bending and you're snapping just like this. So, but if you don't like that, you can just always push it back a little, you know, and so it's more, I feel like it's, it's, you have better control. If you're having issues with the control, you feel like it's too bendy for me or it's too snappy for me, then just kind of push it back there. Then you have it normal like that. So with your brush pen, I want you to pick up your um, pit artist pens or whatever brush pen you're using. And I want you to just kind of like play around with markings. And I highly suggest that if you're someone who likes to go shopping for new art supplies, um, if you can, you know, there are some material or some products and some brands that offer their um, pens um, open stock. So you can actually pick out just a few to try. So instead of buying the whole set, um, which is always fun anyways, but, you know, if you just want to keep trying and see how you like this new pen or this new product, I highly suggest just get the open stock and pick out, you know, one, two, three colors of your favorite colors and then try it and then try it with the notebook or the sketchbook that you're using. That's a fun way also to see, you know, I can get used to this or I can use it this way, or maybe you don't like it. And then, so if you end up liking it, then you know that, okay, now I feel like I'm ready to get the big set. So just don't jump in right and get the 40 set or, you know, a 48 or 60, 72 and all that. All right. So what I'm doing is I'm just trying to be more comfortable with my brush pen, understanding how much flex I get from this and all that. And also this will build a, um, a muscle memory, a muscle control of how much pressure do I need to apply to create a much thicker stroke. And notice how, when I am trying to create a thicker stroke, I change the position of how I hold my pen. Instead of holding my pen upside down like this, I'm actually holding my pen around 45 degree ankle from the paper like this. So I can really bend and really get those thicker strokes like that. And this way also you can cover a larger space or color a larger space at a time. So one thing I love about the Pit Artist Pens is you're going to notice here, and I'm going to show you, let me see if I can use it. One thing I love about the India inks is that it almost, it's almost like appear to be muted in the beginning. But the way I see it is it's like using watercolors. So my first um, color would be, you know, just a wash. So it's very light. It's very muted. Now the India inks, the way they work, is like watercolor really, because the colors layer on top of one another. So I'm just going to do one stroke here like that. I'm going to let it dry. And then I'm going to go in and you're going to see the value is going to change. It's going to get darker. And so this is an amazing way to actually add some shadow and depth to your color without having to use another marker, you know, a darker shade or a darker value of the gold, let's say the green gold. Um, this one is called green gold um, to get a darker shade of brown to say on top of this to create some shadow and depth. You can use one marker to add some contrast right away. You don't need another marker, so that will save you. So I'm just going to add here. See, notice how that value changed already. Just keep adding in here. So you can layer it kind of like watercolors, like how you would with watercolors. And that's the beauty of the Pit Artist pens as well. So like that. 
It's so pretty. Hi, Carla. The Pit Artist pens are actually available at Michael's. So it comes in many different sets, but I believe that you go to the store, they're open. Um, they're available for open stock as well. All right. So are you comfortable with your brush pens now? So like that, see how you, I added some contrast just using one marker. So I added and changed the value and I got a, dip, a deeper value, deeper color by just applying uh, another layer on top of the layer to create a really contrasting color. Exactly, Susie. It's just amazing. It really is. It can be a little pricey, the Pit Artist pens, but then you're getting an artist grade quality marker in here. You know, we're not talking about just some cheap stuff. <laughs> but to me, for me, when I think about my art supplies and I think about how I'm going to use it, and think of a longer period of how I'm going to learn with this, use it with my lettering, use it for my illustrations. And if you're an artist who likes, who would think of, who thinks of selling their art eventually, this, these are great investment. Can you imagine you get two nibs and one marker, you're getting two, three marker in one marker because you can use it as a watercolor and change your opacity, change the value of that color, you know, to get that contrast. All right. So let's do the romantic bullet journal style. Now we can set up the bullet journal like how I would, I use pencil. I love a vertical layout, um, but if you're not gonna do bullet journal today, you can skip this part. I'm just gonna show you how I like to set up mine. Um, I like to use pencil first. And sometimes I don't even go in with a marker anymore. I just use pencil because it's easy to erase if you make a mistake which I always do. I'm just gonna do one, one page because this is just a sample page, All right? And so I'm just gonna divide this box into three like this. So let's say you have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday in here already. Oops, let me see, zoom out that. There. So let's start with the florals because the florals is the fun part. Like what I said in the beginning, I, like what I said in the beginning, I really want to be more loose about my style. Now, if you're going to use a bullet journal or if you're going to use this technique in a bullet journal, I normally would put in my um, month over here on this side, um, maybe here in the middle, maybe put, or just depends. You want to do February, the whole um, February, then you're not going to have enough space to do your florals, to do your, you know, decorating um, in here. So I'm just going to put the word, the month or the title here, February. I am so, I cannot decide how I want it. Do I want it in pink? I think I want it in pink. And I'm not going to use the full February. I'm just going to do F-E-B. Now you can do a brush lettering, you can do a print or just, you know, um, regular print. And I am trying to figure out how I want it. I think I'm gonna use black to have a contrast. Still use the Pit Artist Pen. And I'm gonna make it small. I'm gonna probably use four dot grid. So just to keep it small and tiny here. Just one, two, three, four, five, actually five, five dots. If you're not comfortable in using your brush pen straight on, then use a pencil first and then sketch, you know, the title. If you have any questions when it comes to brush lettering, I highly suggest checking out last week's class that is now available on YouTube. We did a brush lettering rewind, kind of like um, brush lettering 101 refreshed everybody's um, skill when it comes to brush lettering. So we talked about the do's and the don'ts. Um, it was a really good class. Sometimes when I do brush lettering class, I feel like 
I wish and I hope that somebody learned something because sometimes I feel like there's just too much information. Does that make sense? You know, when you're like trying to take in so much information, I feel like sometimes I hope they really learned something because I was bombarding them with so much information with it for, um, to fit in an hour. So it's like, I, I wish they learned something. All right. Oh, yes, yes. Those are good too. The friction erasable pens. Those are really good. All right. So I think I have that. I'm good with that. Now we're going to start with the florals. The way I would do my florals, I would actually have almost like a half um, rose in here. Okay. So I'm going to start with a very, very light pink. So this is the pale pink. And I'm going to do, think of it as shapes. All right. So instead of a perfect circle, you want to, um, have this almost like rigid, you know, it's like imperfect half circle in there. So I'm just, I just did that. And I'm going to go one by one, small strokes to fill this imperfect half circle here. And this will be for the rows. Now, if you will ask me two, th three years ago, this will bother me a lot, that short strokes and the stain and that mark that it leaves in the paper. But now I am actually intentionally trying to create this beautiful texture underneath. Um, I don't know if it's the loving the mixed media. I have fallen in love with the mixed media and that children's style book of illustration. That's I have just fallen hard, <laughs> let's say, for the textures. And so those short strokes, you might not be seeing it because it's very, very light. Now, what I want us to do when it comes to creating rose petals using some pens, some brush pens, um, it's kind of like making crescent, you know, um, like a crescent moon. So you want to start or a letter C, think of it as a C, but this is going to work well. If you apply some variation, um, a different from thin to thick. So let's say I'm just going to do it. So sample, let's say, okay. So C letter C, I'm going to start with a light pressure and then I'm going to press on the marker, apply a little bit of pressure and then lift and release that pressure and go light again. So I'll go light. Okay. Bend and press some pressure and then lift like this. Right. So it's like, it's like not a perfect but that's what we want. So light pressure, start with the very tip of the pen. And then when you're applying your pressure, you're going to use the body of that tip, or I'm no, sorry, the body of the pen, and then lift and use the tip again. So let me zoom in so you can see a little bit better. So we're gonna do here, I'm using the body and then just use the tip and release the pressure, right? So just like that. And then I'm gonna repeat the same. Now body, apply some pressure and then lift. Now, if this is your first time doing it, you might wanna take your time, Be it's okay. So just take your time. You can go as slow as I, how I'm doing it right now. So tip of the pen, apply some pressure, use the body of the pen or the marker, and then lift again, just like that. All right, and then notice how my shape for the petals is now getting bigger. So small, now bigger, and just like that. So we're just gonna keep adding some petals. Think of your brush pen as a round brush, you know, when using your watercolors. So it goes the same way. When you use those brushes, you're going to, the strokes that you're going to get from your brush depends on the amount of pressure that you're using. To create a thin stroke, you're applying light pressure. To create a thick stroke, you're applying heavier pressure and you're using more of the belly of the belly or the body 
of the brush. So don't be afraid to really press on and apply some pressure in there. Okay, so basically this is this is it. And I think the more um, imperfect and the more not uniform your strokes are, I think the better it is because in, you know, out there in nature, it's very, everything is so imperfect. It's like not, not the same. They're so, it, it creates different, the leaves, you know, the colors of the leaves, the shapes, the direction, some parts of the leaves, when you look at them in person, they're the leaf, the, the wind is blowing it in some other direction or the petals, some of it is already, you know, um, wilting. And, and so it's just, so create some organic marks like this and be loose and be free. But as long as you keep in your mind, use the tip for the very small strokes or, or thin strokes, and then use the belly or the body of the brush pen to create a much bigger or thicker mark like that one. All right. So I'm going to do apply it and apply it here in my drawing. So basically I use that light pink to just give me an idea of how wide and how big my flowers, how I want my flowers to be, or else I'm just going to keep adding petals and I'm not going to stop. <laughs> that's my, that's my issue. So just like that. Just add that. I'm, and I'm just going to be free. I'm not going to be I'm not gonna stress myself with this, just like that. It's just beautiful how different marks I'm getting from this brush pen it just depends on the position of the brush also. So you notice how I'm holding it here on top. And if you feel like this is hard for you, you might want to move your paper around your notebook around instead of trying, you know, so hard to kind of like twist your hand um, don't do that. Make sure to move your canvas around or your notebook around to whichever way is more, most comfortable for you. So I'm going to do that. That's like my half. Perfectly imperfect. I like that very much. So um, Judith, I think I'm going to do the, the petals, the flowers. I mean, sorry, the leaves very loosely. Also, we're going to find out. I don't think I'm going to make any stems today. So we're just going to make it almost like a like um a bouquet of flowers. So we're going to create another different type of stroke this time. I'm going to use a different color. So I'm going to let that be. My next color would be pink carmine. I'm going to show you. Now this one I'm going to make my marks like as organic as I can. Again, with the suggestion <laughs> to my audience that these are flower petals. You know, you can make it like how I did it here, or you can make it just a regular petal. So create your base shape first. Let's say I'm gonna create four petals in here to give me a guide as well. And then add some short, uh, a thin long strokes to color in the petals like this, you know, if that's something that you like. But I really think I like this way. I'm gonna try it again, see how I did that. So the most important one to create when creating florals in a very loosely manner, I think it's thinking that we need to have a white space in between the petals because we're basically creating a, um, we're creating the highlights already and also the separation from your petal, one petal to the other. Um, so as you can see, there's like white spaces in between you know, the petals or supposedly the petals. Um, so think of it that way. You don't want to have a mark like this where notice how there's no separation. So you don't have a separation in between the petals. So what we want is we want to create marks like that. And then you want to be mindful of your spacing just to create that space in between. So you can really suggest to your audience that, hey, these are petals. See, there's like a separation in between the petals. So that's our floral, right? 
that's another goal, Carla, is to create more florals, more loose florals. And we do have an upcoming class in March. We're going to use a different um, brush pen from Fabric Cell, which is the Black Edition, the soft brush pen. That's the one I suggest if you're just beginning to use um, brush pen and you don't want to invest so much money. Um, the Black Edition of the Pit Artist pens, they made it to be... Um, cheaper and to be more affordable for you know us hobbyists and enthusiasts so those are a really good one to get um, if you don't want to spend um, if you're not ready to spend and invest in a really uh, artist quality marker so those are good ones all right so I think I'm gonna go in with the loose petals Whew. and I'm gonna try to be as loose as I can be I think I'm gonna switch my notebook like this okay so I'm just gonna do petal like that, create this. I, again, it's like suggesting that these are flowers, right? Like that. Okay, I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm okay with that. And then I'm gonna add another one here to this side. Just like that. Yeah, I like that. And then I actually am going to use the same color, the pink carmine, to add like stymon in the middle of my, just to add some texture. Like that middle part of my flower. Thank you, Jackie. It's from Essie. I can't remember the name. I just paint my nails because I'm so lazy to go out. This one is another color, scarlet red, but I think I'm going to go in with my leaves. Now the leaves, if I do a traditional leaf, leaves, <laughs> if I do traditional leaves in here, it might look awkward because I've already created my floral so painterly that if I do my leaves, you know how, just like this, it might look out of place, but I don't know. We'll see. Might not, but if I want to be just more loose about my leaves, I'm just going to go just like that, kind of like, as long as you have that shape of a leaf, then people will know it's a leaf anyway. So I'm just going to go two here, two small ones, two small ones on the side. So the side of this flower. So I'm just going to do a mark. Look at this mark. Does that even look like a leaf? It doesn't, but you know what? That those are leaves. But see how, what I'm talking about? The more, it's like the more loose I am, the more I like it. It's like so pretty. <laughs> Before this would drive me bananas. I'm like, I don't like it. It's so, uh, I don't like it. It's ugly. But I love it. I love it now so much. All right. I think I'm going to grab a super fine this one is the 0 0.3 of the pit artist pens if you don't have it if you have like a brown colored pencil in there lying around somewhere you can use it to just add a line to your leaves you know the middle part but i think i'm going to use this one because this is what i have so i'm just going to add like that like a sh well it's ah i've applied too much pressure just be mindful. I just want to be just like that. It just kind of also shows the direction of my leaves. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. Okay. Now I want to do another part right here. I think on top of the February, just so it looks very, um, what I'm going to do is my half of the flower. I'm going to switch my notebook here because this is going to be more comfortable. So let me move some things around. This is what I was talking about. You know, whatever it is, is more comfortable for you. Do it. You know, if you have to switch your notebooks, I, there's many different artists out there that no, they, they don't like doing it. You know what I say, whatever feels the best, do it. So again, I'm only doing this very light pink just to kind of give me an idea how big my fl flower is going to be. Because again, I have the tendency to just kind of like overdo things and get in there and just keep adding petals. I'm like, oh, that's big. 
doesn't look good. So that light base, that first base of the light pink just gives me an idea how I want to lay down the floral or the rose or the flower. So I want my almost like the middle of the flower to be in here. Ooh, I used a different color. Okay, I'm using the pink carmine this time. All right, no problem. Let me use that. And then we're just going to keep adding the petals. And if I am not talking here with you, I probably would have finished this very, very quickly. So, you know, when you see all these, I'm going, by the way, I'm going kind of like over that sample that I created. Um, I could have finished this 15 minutes, you know. Um, so when you see all these complicated, beautiful spreads um, on social media, um, sometimes it's not really that hard. It's just how comfortable you are with your art and how you're going to get there is keep doing it. I mean, keep making mistakes use a sketchbook and really just, you know, if all you have to do in one page or two, three pages are just petals, do it. Because that's the only way you're really going to get comfortable and going to get better, not perfect, but better. All right. So because practice doesn't make you perfect, it just makes you better. And so it's a skill. Remember, it's a skill, you can practice it, the more you spend time with it, you're going to get better. So I'm just going to follow it. I'm just using a different color, but I will do the same almost arrangement, where I'm going to have like the two other florals in here. I am not happy with this arrangement. I'm just going to put it out there. <laughs> almost like, what was that? <laughs> I didn't look, I didn't have enough white. That's why I wasn't happy. And I want you to see the difference of that when you have white in between your petals. This one, I was just kind of like stroke happy and I was just laying down strokes without any intention. So no, 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 no. I'm going to switch this around. I'm going to try to be better here. And I think what's happening also is that my tip of that mark is too squarish. So I think that's the what I'm seeing. What I just keep seeing is that too squarish on top. So all I'm doing is I'm just using the tip of the brush to kind of like add some thinner strokes that's sticking out. Am I super delighted with that? No, I'm not but we're just going to keep going. So this one, I'm just going on top of the first layer and just kind of like adding details because remember, it's kind of like getting two markers in one because remember the first layer would be light. And the more you add, you're changing the value or changing, you know, the opacity or the depth of the color. So I want to add like a deeper shade of pink on top, but I was just using the same marker. And this time I'm just going to add the leaves. Two leaves in there. Just like that. With the next class that we're going to do, I actually have a printable with the sketch already because sometimes it's the composition that's a little um, difficult, you know, for a lot of us, including myself, you know, I have to really practice and sketch a whole lot. Now, because I used the pink carmine for my rose, I'm just using the magenta color, a darker shade to kind of like add the stymie, so that little small tiny dots and textures for my flower. And then I'm going to add, now to make it even more romantic, I suppose, this spread, I'm going to use the same, um, same pink matter lake. And I'm going to add just like a little bit of these to add to those sides like that. So again, don't overthink this one. We're just making organic marks look. Just small, tiny pink ones, right? Just like that. 
add it here. So if you have like frayed brush tips already, don't worry because it's going to create like very different marks. So don't throw it away. If you feel like, oh God, that's fray already and I don't like it. It may not be good for brush lettering to get those thin um, strokes, but it could be good for illustrations, you know? So like this, when you're making marks, because of the fraying part of the felt tip, it's giving a bit more different texture to your illustration. So it's just very different. I really love that. Now, of course, if this is a bullet journal, you're going to want, you know, to color in the top to add in your days of the week. Just like that. And then you can use... So notice how I am using very limited color palette. And again, that's something that I have learned through the years that sometimes when I make an illustration and, you know, it's like, it looks good, but there's just something wrong about it. Sometimes it's the too busy, you know, um, again, but if that's your style, I mean, go ahead. But to me, what I've noticed is that when I limit myself in three, four, maybe max four of a color, um, then it becomes more like, it's not uniform. That's the wrong term. I can't think of it. Sorry, sign of old age. I can't think of the term. It just looks better. You know, I feel like it's just well put together um, because there's not so much crazy colors going on um, that it hurts the eye. But when you have limited colors of three, again, four colors, I feel like personally, you know, I feel like I like that better. Now, I feel like I want more texture in here. How can I do that? How can I add a bit more texture? Now, this is where it's mixed media already. You can create, get some colored pencils. I love using this. I love using colored pencils on top of my markers and on top of my watercolors just to add some textures. It just gives a little bit more extra. I don't know what it is, but see here, this is really bothering me. Um, so what I'm going to do is I want to try and separate it and add more contrast, maybe a darker shade. Not sure if this will work because it looks really light. Now, if you have a darker shade, maybe, maybe a magenta color, Maybe that will give contrast. I'm going to zoom in just so you can see. And maybe you can try this and see if this is something that you feel like you want to start doing also. Just going to add here and just, I don't think that it will show up. So I'm going to change the color to a darker shade. Maybe this red one. I don't think it will show up also, but it creates texture. I just feel like I need a darker color in there. So maybe go for a brown. Oh my gosh, I don't know. Oh, there. This one is 733. So I'm just following the direction of the flower already, but I'm just adding like strokes in here just to add texture and also to kind of add a bit more visual interest because I didn't leave enough white space, now I'm adding a darker shade to create that look of having a petals that are separated. See, because I didn't do it right the first time, now I have to go back in and try something else to just give that illusion of, hey, there are some petals in here that are separated. But I thought it's important for you guys to see that also that, okay, maybe I didn't get it the first time, but I really have this particular look inside my head that I want to do. So this is one solution to do that. So now, you know, so if you find yourself in the same, you know, situation, you can also do what I did. Now I just added some contrast from the pencils and just add that. And it just gives that, it just looks so different and looks so pretty. I love it. Now I want to add a little bit more embellishments here. I want to use a bit more of the green gold. 
I'm going to create, see this tiny textures that we created. Now I'm going to make that slightly bigger, but I'm going to make it in three, just like that. Just three imperfect. Just like that. I think I'm good with that. Maybe a bit more here. Yeah. Now, if you want to continue on, you know, and do a bit more of your floral on the right side, then you then feel free to do that. You know, so when I add my days of the week, I use a much smaller, a finer tip. This one is a super fine, which is, I believe that this is the point three. So I do that. You can try to just make it as a print. Monday. And if you really want to have a contrast, then maybe you can go come back in and add, use the same marker to finish your lines. And I think this is really going to help to have that contrast also. I love this ruler from Artist Loft because it's clear. I can really see where... I need to go because I am not embarrassed to say that I am not the best at using a ruler. <laughs> I feel like I mess it up every single time. The one thing that you're going to love with the Pit Artist pens is that they also dry really fast. So you know, you're not going to be scared of smudging or anything like that because it dries really quick. Now, again, it depends on the paper that you're using. Some papers really, um, they let the ink sit in there for a little bit for some artists that wants to manipulate their, um, their inks for their certain style of illustration. But that really did help. What do you guys think of the florals that we created today? Do you like this style? Or do you like the more, um, you know, very clean looking or you like this organic look? I mean, I personally love this organic look and I am embracing it more and more. Um, I don't know if it's um, part of getting old, but I am really falling in love with it. Now, if this is my bullet journal, I would normally put in um, the top three things I need to do for the week over here. Or you can choose to find a beautiful quote who put you, you know, um, inspire you for the whole week. Um, but yeah, there's so many things that you can do in your bullet journal. I think you just need to really um, not be afraid, not be afraid to make mistakes and not be afraid to experiment, you know, um, and just have fun. Don't forget to have fun because that's the most important part. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining in. Um is it not? I'm sorry, but I think it's just going to take practice. Like what you said, it really is going to, um, I think the more you play with it and also it's the, um, it's also that thinking of not make it, do not make it, do not try to make it look perfect. I'm sorry. Do not try to make it look perfect, but the more imperfect it is, I think the better it's just embracing the style. Sometimes it's that too, but um, play with your pressure, light, heavy, light, heavy, and then play around with how you use the brush, brush pen, you know, the tip and the body, the tip and the body to really create those beautiful petals, but keep playing. And as always stay creative and stay happy. I'll see you next week. Same time, five o'clock central standard. Thank you so much. On behalf of Faber Castell USA and Michael Stores, we'll see you again. Thank you for spending some time with us. Bye, everybody.